For every DaVinci Resolve project, I kind of make the decision, how do I want to group these clips to color my clips, even though I'm doing a contrasting black and white, wedding, TikTok, short, reel, all those names <laughs> for the same 10 second video. I do make that judgment call. And for this one, I just went into the light box, which I just keep wanting to call lunchbox for some strange odd reason. But we're gonna, we're gonna feast on these clips. Yes, they're already black and white because I've already created this project. But all I did was say, take this clip as my bottom where the audio is coming from, and I just put everything into a group, the A74 group. Simple as that. Coming out of Lightbox, I then went and got these four dots up here, which you'll get if you group it that way. Group pre-clip, clip, group post-clip, and timeline, which I didn't do anything on the timeline level for this particular project. Use a simple color space transform to go right onto this clip. Even though it's black and white, I still use that. And I just went with the RGB mixer to go with simply clicking monochrome. All that's done group post clip. So that means everything's gonna be black and white that I put into that group. Except for this one clip right here, but this clip isn't seen, so it completely doesn't matter. Oh yeah, by the way, I am Jaeger. Welcome to the channel. We talk about photo video stuff, get a little techie from time to time, and go on about how bad a gamer I am. Thank you for hanging out with me. It seems so long ago when we first met, seconds turned into minutes, minutes turned into hours, and hours turned into days, days turned into years. It was in each one of those minutes I knew I loved you. TikToks and Reels just by their very nature. Probably get more eyes on them, more people will check it out online just by scrolling along. So that's why I went with creating it in this way. I've got Arvin and I've got Michelle here in this clip today. I'm gonna pick this shot as my hero shot to get started on with Arvin. The big thing that I want to do is work on a clip level. I've got everything turned off right now after doing that monochrome. So I'll just turn them on one by one. I had to work on getting our exposure just right. Contrast had to get just right, which I worked on down here in this entire area. Balance, didn't touch that. Highlights, I went in and did some work on the highlights and there's two ways you can go about doing that. Down here, you can just mess with highlights or come right over here to high dynamic range color wheels and literally just mess with the highlights right here. Here's an even better clip to show off how using highlights can affect the image. Keep your eye right here on the invitation. The highlight going all the way to negative 80, 92. Well, then the image starts to break. So we can't go that far with it. But we can pull it up even higher. And then it starts to break that way. So fine tuning and getting it where you can still see text. Not really enough to read the invitation, but to know that there's text there and it's not looking too wonky or weird. Something to keep an eye on with the highlights. The big secret sauce right here, so to speak, is the contrast. I made a conscious decision that I want to go with a, for lack of a better term, but a term that gets used a lot, punchy, contrasty look. That just means some black or blacks, some white or whites to a point where it's not super blown out. And in some areas it is sort of that way. But I was able to control a little bit up around his forehead area with this highlight node. Notice this red node right here. Well, there's a little red dot beside things like this curves panel right here and the RGB mixer. All that does is let you know, in case you get lost with all these nodes, what you used inside of a particular node. Red contrast node, red dot beside curve, red dot beside RGB. So it helps you keep things straight. And of course, labeling your nodes. Also a good way to go. I don't use a fixed node structure in DaVinci Resolve because I kind of tend to have to do some different things from project to project. So I never really settled on one, but exposure, contrast, and balance definitely are the big three. And I'll probably run some parallel node for a secondary, in this case, the highlights. And then anything with texture will be outside of that, such as midtone detail, maybe some blur stuff. And at the very end, it's generally gonna be my color space transform. In this case, Sony S-Log3. The big thing about getting this look, the secret sauce is all inside of this sort of S-curve right here that I created. And this S-curve was sort of maintained across clips and just adjusted accordingly to how they needed to be adjusted. 
I did this as a short because there's a longer form video that is on the way. So hit that subscribe button not to miss that from Arvin and Michelle's big day now. I think I'm so much being the coolest people ever. <laughs> and let me just run camera and video with them. And a big shout out to Haley, who's doing the still photography, who let me tag along and aggravate her all day long as well for this shoot day. <laughs> And that is our punchy contrasty black and white TikTok reel in short little behind the scenes there. If you like this video, hit that like button. And thanks for hanging out with me. I really do appreciate it. Please subscribe. It's never miss a shot from Jaegershots.com. See ya.